This is a short video about ruby and diamond rings. Now I can talk for hours and hours about ruby. If you want a lot more information, have a look at the Gempora website or get my book, uh, The Lure of Gemstones. But before I talk about ruby in depth, mm, we like what ruby. about designs? We, 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 we just love ruby. Ruby is a fantastic gemstone to work with. And you know what, it has been, over the years, it's a timeless classic. It's one of those gemstones that everybody ultimately, wow, red gemstone, what is it? It's a ruby. Um, and it lends itself so easily to so many different styles and so many different designs. But ultimately, probably what is probably one of the most classic and timeless designs is the solitaire with the halo of diamonds surrounding the outside. I mean, it just, it, it's, it's ageless, it's elegant, it's timeless. That combined with probably a diamond and ruby uh, eternity band is also a very classic look too. Um, but I mean, we, can, we work with so many different styles from big cocktail rings. Um, there was a, a very famous Elizabeth Taylor uh, ring that I think went to auction a, a few years ago for X amount of million pounds. Um, and we did an inspired by sort of design where obviously it wasn't the same, but it had that look. It was a big ruby and it just looked incredible. So, yeah, I mean, when it comes to working with ruby in terms of design, there are so many different styles. And if you look at gemporia.com, you'll be able to see quite how many different styles there are. From a technical point of view, a ruby and a sapphire are actually exactly the same gemstone and not a lot of people realize this but sapphires if you think about them when you say the word sapphire you think blue but if you've shopped around a bit you'll have seen yellow sapphires you'll have mm. seen green sapphires orange sapphires in fact you can get sapphire in every single color apart from red because when it's red we rename it a ruby now rubies and sapphires are both very durable gemstones they're the second hardest element on the planet so after a diamond which is the hardest thing on the planet it's what we call 10 on a low scale rubies are nine so they're incredibly incredibly durable but once you've decided which one of hopefully my wife's <laughs> designs you're going to actually buy whether it be the solitaire whether it be the eternity band or one with the halo of diamonds around the outside the next question is what quality of ruby are you going for now the prices vary quite a lot depending on the clarity within the ruby if you can see into the ruby with, with a, a degree of transparency then the prices go up considerably if it's quite opaque and, and a sort of no internal glow then the prices can be still very reasonable indeed but also when it comes to ruby, there is something that's happened over the last 30, 40 years where man, we can enhance the ruby. So we can enhance the clarity using various different techniques. But the most important thing of all is when you're buying your ruby is that that is disclosed at the time uh, of purchase. So one of the things I've written about for many, many articles is that whenever you buy rubies, you must be buying from a retailer mm -hmm. who knows what they're talking about because many won't even know the different types of enhancements. And what you really want is you want a ruby that's beautiful and you just need to know what enhancement it has had. Has it been heat treated? Has it had any fillers, any polyfillers in there? And all these things affect the value, but also the beauty of the gem. And they're all absolutely fine as long as they're disclosed properly. Yeah, absolutely. But, I, you know, along with that goes, what, what what is your budget? If you're looking for something that is affordable, that may have had some more treatments to it, still beautiful, still a gemstone. Um, but, but, of course, if you're looking for something which is natural and has maybe only had a tiny bit of, um, uh, of heat treatment or something like that, then you really are getting something truly rare. It's probably a very good point what my wife raises there. I suppose, uh, you know under a thousand pound for a ruby ring it doesn't really matter what enhancement it's had you, you're getting great great value over a thousand pound then probably that's the time mm -hmm. that you want the certificate that's telling you exactly the, uh, the enhancements that's had with it and, uh, and 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 it is still the mm -hmm. gemstone of love that's the most important yeah thing. and actually we have so many people come to us uh, to, to, to make styles especially around Valentine's Day because it, it really is if you're going to use a, a gemstone to make a, a ring for sale around that period it has to be a ruby and if you've perhaps never thought of buying a ruby before you know or maybe if you bought gemstones before ruby is probably one of the most searched most understood uh, and, and probably because of its vibrancy of colour probably one of the most sought after gemstones and here's one for you gents if you want that little bit of knowledge to show that actually you're quite intelligent when <laughs> they ask you where did the ruby get its red color from it's actually the presence of a mineral called chromium the element of chromium in the ground 
as the gemstone grows. And the crazy thing of all about chromium is chromium in nearly every other gemstone turns it green. So your emeralds are green because of chromium. Your savorites and your garnets and your tourmalines are green because of chromium. But when chromium comes into a sapphire, or what we call corundum, it turns it bright red. There's something very few people know, and that'll certainly impress her.